Hi everyone, it's Catherine here. Um, so lovely to um, be able to meet with you again this week. Hope you've had a really good week. I know that some of you children may have gone back to school this week and if you have, I hope it's been a really good week and that you've been able um, to see some of your friends again and just to share with them at school. Um, and if you've been at home, still at home learning, then I do hope that you've had a really good week too. Well, if you joined us last week, you will have uh, known that we thought about Pentecost and um, we shared that story, Lego Church style, with our little animation showing how the Spirit came um, to each one of the disciples. Now, who is this Spirit? Well, if you remember, Jesus promised when he went back to heaven that he'd send a helper and that that helper would enable people who follow Jesus to go out into the world and to tell everybody about him. And I'll tell you how that affects us in a little while. But before we do that, let's um, say a prayer together and we'll do prayer drill. So let's just do number one. Wiggle those fingers, get rid of all that energy. Number two, fold your arms. Number three, we'll bow our heads and um, if you agree with the prayer that I say, then you can say Amen and you will know by now it means I agree. So let's pray. Father God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for sending him to us and thank you for the Holy Spirit who can live within us if we trust in you. We pray that you'll help us to understand a little bit more of that this afternoon and help us to trust you in everything that we do. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Okay, now last week in the story, if you remember our little Lego men there, when the Holy Spirit came, the helper who Jesus had promised would be spent, sent, it was a little bit like this. A flame landed on the heads of each of Jesus' followers. A bright flame. It didn't burn their hair or anything like that, but it shone bright. And it represented the helper that Jesus had sent. And that helper was to live within all Christian people because the light could be passed from one to another when Jesus um, comes to live in your heart. That's just how it is. The spirit was also described a little bit like this. Now, I've got very tatty hair at the moment as a result of that. We couldn't see the air that was being blown out of the hairdryer then. Just excuse me, putting my hair right. But we could see the effects of it when it made my hair blow all over the place. And we trust that that air is there. But we don't know, absolutely certainly. But we do know the effects of it on us. In that case, my hair was blown around. But in the case of the Holy Spirit, the effect of the Holy Spirit can be seen in the way that we live our lives, in the way that we treat others, and in the way that we share Jesus' love and, and the message of Jesus with others. One more example for you. A balloon. I'm not very good at blowing these up, so I'll have a go. Now, as you will know, I have filled this balloon with air. We can't see the air in there. We can see the effects of the air because it's expanded the rubber of the balloon and made it look like this. And I bet you can predict what will happen when I let go of this. Let's see. Ooh, that was interesting. All the air came out, the balloon deflated, and the air was dispersed. 
But we know that that air did actually fill that balloon. We saw the effects of it. And if you find it difficult to understand what the Holy Spirit is, just trust that um, Jesus has told us that if we love him, that we will be filled and we will see the effects of the Holy Spirit in the way that we are, in the way that we treat others and in what we believe. Now, Peter, if you remember Peter, he is um, the disciple whom Jesus said he was gonna build his church on, make a rock of him, a real um, foundation for the early Christian church. We know of Peter as being a fisherman, a man who'd not had a lot of education. And yet, at Pentecost on the day when the Spirit came, Peter and all of the other disciples, for the first time ever, were able to speak in many different languages. Now, this was really important for the early church because in Jerusalem at that time, lots of people had gathered um, for um, Pentecost and they came from many different lands. So, because the Spirit allowed Peter and his friends to speak in many, many different languages, they could hear the message of Jesus for themselves for the first time because they were able to receive it. And that is incredible. And Peter, who'd always been um, uneducated and didn't sort of have lots of words about things, if you like, he stood up and he talked to the people and he said to them that they could too share in that lovely Christian message if only they could repent and be baptised. Now, repent's a big word, isn't it? It simply means to be truly sorry for everything that they've ever done that is wrong. And if they are, and if they tell Jesus that, the amazing thing about Jesus is that he forgives us. And the Bible tells us to be baptised. And that means to, we have water put upon us. And it's a symbol, a symbol of Jesus cleaning us and saying that he loves us and that he will always be with us. And that if we truly believe one day, we can go to be with him in heaven and God will welcome us with open arms because we've put our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. What does it all mean for us today then? Well, I think it's exciting because when we've received the Holy Spirit and when uh, Jesus has come to live within our hearts, we have a really, really important job to do. And you know, it's exactly the same job that Peter and the disciples were told to do. And that is to go and tell everybody we meet the same truth that Jesus is Lord, that he loves us and he just wants us to repent and to trust in him and to be baptised in him. And that is absolutely wonderful and exciting. So maybe this week, as you go about your daily things, whether you're at school or at home, whatever you're doing with family and friends, if you love the Lord Jesus, tell people. Tell people that Jesus loves them too. Um, because this is a really important job that we have to do. And it doesn't matter whether you're small or more grown up or older. That job that we have will always be the same. So it's been lovely chatting with you again today. And um, if you want to do any crafts related to balloons and to look at the effect of air, although we can't see it, you can go over to St. Peter's Church website and have a look for a craft there that involves building a hovercraft using a CD, a balloon, a bottle top and um, some very, very sticky glue. So have a good week and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.